Let us start our journey with a question. What is heat transfer? When we talk about heat transfer, we refer to the generation, transfer and conversion of thermal energy or heat between systems. Heat transfer describes the transit of thermal energy in a body or across systems due to temperature differences. Like when a hot coffee cools down in a room. In general, the heat is transferred through different modes, conduction, convection, and radiation. Depending on the application, heat transfer can be dominated by only one mode or all three modes can play a role. In the latter case, the analysis can become pretty complex. When studying or designing systems that involve heat transfer, engineers and scientists need to understand the physical mechanisms of heat transfer and be able to apply the heat transfer theory to analyze and quantify the heat in those systems. Applications of heat transfer are countless across all industries and in everyday life. From chemical processes, to the oven we use to bake a pizza. Let us analyze some of these applications and get an idea of the broad spectrum of systems where heat transfer is important. Whether you warm up your room during winter or cool down the temperature during a hot summer, you take advantage of heat transfer. Heating, ventilation and air conditioning or HVAC systems use heat transfer to heat up or cool down the air that is then ventilated in the room. HVAC systems control the temperature of houses, offices and vehicles. Speaking of which, you may have heard about the car radiator. That is a heat exchanger system that uses two fluids separated by a solid wall like a metal tube to enhance heat transfer in the system. The car radiator uses the external air to cool down the liquid that passes through the engine so that we can avoid overheating. Heat exchangers are used in petrochemical and chemical plants and even in a common refrigerator. Many homes in cold climates use furnaces to heat the rooms. Simply heating air and using air ducts to distribute the air in all the rooms. Boilers are typically used to heat up and supply hot water. They can also be used to provide steam for heating. Another common application of heat transfer is the thermal power plants. In these plants, the heat generated by burning coal or natural gas or even by nuclear reactions is used to produce steam from water. The high pressure steam is then used to move generators to produce electricity. Nowadays, we are surrounded by electronic products such as smartphones and computers. Their internal components naturally heat up during operation. This is a byproduct of the resistance of circuitry that the electric current has to encounter. Electronic cooling is extremely important to avoid overheating and maintain the electronics operation. It can be a serious challenge in tightly packed electronics like smartphones where heat cannot be removed using fans. The sun is another source of heat transfer. Photovoltaic panels or solar heating are examples of applications where the heat transfer is mostly due to solar irradiation. For example, the solar towers in solar thermal plants use glass reflectors to concentrate the sunlight onto the top of the tower that would heat up the water inside and generate steam. Heat transfer is not only a terrestrial thing. We can still have heat transfer in outer space. The only mode of heat transfer through vacuum is radiation. Satellites and spacecrafts can only shed internally generated heat through radiation and this poses several challenges in the design of such vehicles. Now that we have a broad view of applications of heat transfer, 
let us move to the next lessons to learn the theory of heat transfer.